Bully the Narco, week two of COP29 here, and there's a lot to catch up on from the first week. Here's a quick update on where negotiations stand. Progress has been slow. Talks on the new co- Collective Quantified Goal, or NCQG, basically the new climate finance target, is, in, is now with ministers. While the text is more balanced than before, it's now time for our ministers def- to defend our positions to meet our needs and that of developing countries. The implementation of the global stock take outcomes, our progress check on the Paris Agreement, isn't, mo- isn't moving forward as we hoped. Samoa, on behalf of vulnerable nations, stressed that incremental progress here is unacceptable. When lives are on the line, without convergence, we risk leaving Baku without actionable outcomes. On cutting emissions or mitigation, there's a, stand- there's a standoff. Wealthy nations want stronger commitments, but develop, developing nations are pointing out the lack of support, like finance and technology, that they need to make those cuts. There's been slight progress in loss and damage, with 19 million pledged to its fund, a mere drop in the ocean. No consensus was reached on other essential loss and damage agenda items, which would help countries hit hardest by climate impacts. As week two starts, it's crunch time. Leaders must act with urgency. We need bold decisions on finance, mitigation, adaptation, and loss and damage to ensure COP29 delivers meaningful outcomes to keep 1.5 degrees, our survival limit, alive. We need to make this week count. For more detailed updates on the day-to-day negotiations, check out PECAN's daily policy updates. Visit pecan.org forward slash COP29 updates.